hands. Give thanks to the Lord. thanks we give you praise we love you we praise you we thank you lord in jesus name amen you may be seated steps into the presence now the tabernacle all right is an example of the place that God would choose as his residence. Amen. How many want to create something that God would choose as his residence? All right? Yes. And then number two, it is a shadow, all right, which is an, a sketch of an, an outline of the kind of place God would choose as his residence. All right? And number three, it is a pattern, all right, shape, an impression, a style. There's something like this. And then um, it's a figure of the presence of God, of where the presence of God is. It says in Hebrews 9, it says, The first tabernacle, which was a figure for the time then present. It was a figure. It was a pattern. It was an example of the kind of place. Now, when we have crusades, we have some people who go ahead and one of the jobs that they have to do is to get a place that we can stay. Because some of the towns, there are no places to stay. Or you have to be careful. All right? The kind of places. We were in Tatale. We have to get a place that this place can be okay. Do you see? We were in a town called Pasa. We had to find a place (laughs) which can be a residence for us for some period. I hope you get what I'm saying. Not everywhere can work as a residence. How many would agree with me? Yes. And uh, when we, we started with having 
the crusade, you, at a point, you see that people uh, choose places that you cannot stay. Oh, yes. I remember one town we went to, I think it was in Rwanda. Oh, yes. I mean, I can still see the room. <laughs> Yeah. It was a place. But that was not the kind of place that we could say. So we, we just we just there was one place we went, we just left. I, I said, you know, anywhere apart from here. <laughs> oh yes. I remember one place I, I, I had to sit down all night because I couldn't let I couldn't stay there. So it helps me to understand when we talk about God's residence, where where he can be and where he cannot be. Yes, where he can be and where he cannot be. Yes. And so uh, an inexperienced person, I remember one time I said two people, one went and made commitment to a mere place and when the experienced person came there, he said, I thought this place would never be okay. And you realize that a person who is experienced will even see things differently. Yeah. Will even see things differently. Because what you are choosing, a person who can never stay there. We are going for a crusade in, uh, Bo- I think, Bo- Borugu. You know. And we need to get a good place. Yes. We are about to leave for Gambaga. Oh, yes. We, we sing it in Achimota school, and that's why I want to go there. From Gambaga to Accra, from Buyaso to Keta. Mm. Now, after, like in the whole country. So, from Gambaga to Accra, we sing it as part of our school anthem. Oh, yes. So, I have to be there to preach. <laughs> But how to stay there, I need to get a residence or a hotel or some, a place that the environment can work for us to even settle to pray. There are some places you can't pray. You have to pray for yourself. <laughs> so if you want to get into the presence of God and experience the presence of God, you need to carefully look at the path and say that, God's presence stays where these things are and it will not stay where these things are not. Oh, yes. So now you have where he has given us very clearly um, the white linen. Is that not so? White linen. And that's what I was saying that wherein can a young man cleanse his ways? Keep himself pure. Don't think that it ever goes away. But you see, even though there are things that don't go away, there are things that are controlled. Many of the diseases and the problems we have physically can't be cured, but controlled. That's all, so that they don't kill you. So no one is saying you can't cure. There's no medicine unless you are castrated. That can take away the desire and the ideas that come to your mind. The zeal. The capacity, the curiosity. The interest. The natural love. The natural love that you have for sex. The joy. The desire. Uh, the activity, the zeal, but it can be controlled in a way that, so that it does not kill you. Why should this thing that God has made in you to replenish the earth destroy you? I, I, there are some doctors here, they can tell me some of their diseases. We don't cure them, we control them. Hypertension, diabetes, asthma, 
uh, even epilepsy, men- most of the mental illnesses, rheumatoid arthritis. That's why chloroquine, you know, during the pandemic, the chloroquine thing was, people take chloroquine every day for arthritis and so on. They take chloroquine every day, hydroxychloroquine. So that's why they were saying, about why don't they use that one? Because it's something that people take every day. It's not something that they cure something with. You cure malaria in the sense that you kill the malaria parasite and they are no more there. That's a different thing. But this one is not something that is cured. It's something that you take it and then it keeps the thing down. So, many sickle cell disease, many, 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 many diseases and are just kept in such a way that they do not kill you. And that's what they are trying to do with cancer. So, there's a type of specialist called an oncologist. And the aim of an oncologist is to turn cancer into a chronic disease rather than a killer disease. That it has turned it into something that is present and is ongoing for a long time, but not able to kill you so that you even die from something else. Oncologist. It's a cancer specialist. Specialist for cancer. And that's their aim. Their, Their aim is to make cancer something that uh, when you have it, you, they can do something and it's like it's there. It's manage, 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 manage. Then you'll be growing older, you'll be going older. You celebrate your birthday, you'll be going older, you'll be celebrating your birthday, you'll be going older, and then you are still around. Uh-huh. So that maybe you even die of some other, maybe an accident or something, but the thing was not able to kill you. Are you, are you with me? Yes. yes. So, you must understand that these things, they are not things that, from today I expand, repel, reject, cleanse myself from every joy, desire, curiosity, interest, erection, a, a feeling. I mean, it, 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 there's no point in praying such prayers. It's not going to work. All my desire for boys have gone out of me. It's not going to be that way. But you can keep it controlled such that it does not end up killing you. Now, if it's killing you now, we have to rise up and kill the killer. We have to kill the killer so that it loses that power to kill you. Amen. Amen. And, it, and it is possible. You know, years ago when we were in Collegon or building the uh, cathedral, we had, uh, for the first time, we, we were building something underground, a basement. And all the, uh, the distance, you know, if you know, if you've ever been there, the distance in underground was such that we wanted to create a hall underground that we could have meetings in. Yes. And at the same time, that was where people come to dance, you know, in front like here. (laughs) So it was right under there, there was a hall that we were building. Do you see? So the engineer, who was a Liberian, he had just come from Liberia. He was Liberian, he had come from Liberia. He said, so he said, said, how are we going to solve? He said, it's it's very difficult, that length, that length of the hall. Then he said that for every engineering problem, there is a solution. There's an engineering solution. That's that's what he said. There's a solution. So for every sexy problem, 
There is a solution. There is a sexy solution. Yes. Yes. There must be. There must be a solution. Oh, yes. How many believe what I'm saying that for every sexy problem there is a solution? There must be a solution. You are not condemned. You are not doomed. Yes, it can't be. And and you want to serve God. You want to be in the ministry. And this thing is, I mean, plaguing you. You are feeling every day. You are having feelings. Feeling to the left, feeling to the right. Feeling to the left, feeling to the right. Feeling to the left, feeling to the right. There must be a solution. Because to every engineering problem, there is an engineering solution. And to every sexy problem, there is a sexy solution. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. There is. And there is. Oh, yes. Yes. Maybe you don't know. That there are people who have been wilder than you. Deeper than you. Further than you. Outside more than you are outside. Who have been able to solve it from that place and have come into the main house. Oh yes. So... The white linen, you know, you, 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 you know now that, I mean, you are not going to have the presence of God without the white linen. Oh, yes. The first thing you can see as you're approaching the thing is white. Yeah. As you're approaching the thing is white. I mean, before I... I Years ago, before I was married, amen. I looked at myself. Hey, God. <laughs> hey. 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 What kind of thing is this? <laughs> what are all these? But you see, as you go through life, you would think that that problem will just fly away. Uh, Because you are now 40 years. You are now 32. You see, I remember one time I was asking about President Mugabe's children. I mean, how many children he had and all that. And I heard one of them was around 20 years old. Oh, yes. He was, he was 90. I said, wow. I said, hey! Say, wow. Hey! 70 with ease, and still you are on it. But to every sexy problem, there is a sexy solution. By the grace, by the grace, by the grace, by the grace, you will make it. 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 You will make it by the grace. Yes. God will take care of you. Amen. So white linen and then scarlet. 
Wow. What does scarlet speak of? Boldness. Yes. Huh? No sissies. Boldness is needed to experience the presence. One time I met the Archbishop of Canterbury. The Queen's pastor. Oh, yes. The pastor of the Queen. The one who will officiate the coronation. Yes. The one who will anoint her and put the crown on her head. I took my scarlet took my scarlet and I went boldly to him. I went boldly to him. Oh, yes. That's why I have pictures with him. I said, oh, let me take a picture with you. <laughs> Your boldness will be wonderful after today. Then we have purple and God's presence. Purple in the thing. It's purple in the where God. So if you have been sent as an advanced crusade director to go and look for a house for the crusade, you have to look for purple. Is there purple in it? Is there white linen? Is there uh, scarlet? Yes. And the purple speaks of what? Royalty. Royalty. Yes. The dignified, wonderful, enough place where his presence can be. Yes. And the ramshackled, bedraggled, shabby picture. Well, you are happy there all the time. With the toilet smelling in the church. (laughs) That picture is going away from you. And then we have blue. Blue. What does blue speak of? What you see the blue sky? Stability and faithfulness. And loyalty of God. It's always there. So beautiful. The blue sky. And movable, yes. And once that, you know, there are some people, do you look at people's eyes? You know, my mother told me what she looks at when she looks at somebody. It made me look at what she looks at. Oh, yes. Then one day she told me about people's eyes. Yes. I started to look at people's eyes. Many of you have in, have, don't know that people have different colors in their eyes. Yes. But you see, there's something in the eye that you can see that the person is thinking fast. The eye will be going here, 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 here. here. It's looking at you, but the eye is moving. Right? It's thinking. And stable, shifty eyes. Thinking of something to do and a move to make. Come down and become a stable person who is not planning something. What you may do, a move you can make to outsmart somebody. To cheat the system. To betray the system. To fight the system. How can you be here as a spy? How can you be here as a spy? As a traitor. We are having our private camp. And you've come to be a traitor and a spy. May you be cursed. Then we have gold and God's presence. What is that? 
long lasting. Bible says every man's work shall be tried of what sort it is. Whether it's gold, silver, diamond, wood. You let's pass of wood here and leave it for 40 years. You come in 40 years, you will not find that wood here. It would have disintegrated. But put gold here. For 40 years, you come back and find it there. And the value will be even more. Gold, the price of gold. The price of gold in 19... uh, What's the price of gold now? What's the price of gold now? You don't know, you see, you don't know the price of gold. How much? 1,000. What was the price of gold in 1989? Shh. 1,800. Yes. Per ounce. Price of gold in 1989. Four hundred and one, yes. The price of gold was four hundred dollars an ounce in nineteen eighty nine. Today, eh, it's one thousand eight hundred dollars per ounce. From nineteen eighty nine, no, nineteen. Uh, what did I say? 1989. Why did I say 1989? 1992. 1992 is what I want. Price of gold. When at that time we had Ashanti gold fields. Before it was sold to Anglo gold. $333. Yes. An ounce. When was Ashanti gold fields sold? It was 300 and something dollars for an ounce. 30 years later, it's 1,800 for one ounce of gold. Times six. So you see, gold is a wild thing. Wawa boards have not, I mean, I don't think the Wawa boards have, have maintained their price. <laughs> Brass. Have we looked at brass? Sit down then. Now, brass signifies strength. Yes. Kingly strength, suffering, and also judgment. Brass is a precious treasure that is used to create an environment. You cannot have a good church where the presence of God is without strength. Yes. People think that strength is offensive, but strength is necessary for the presence of God. Weak leaders cause disloyalty to arise because of their style of leadership. I can often point to the start of confusion to weak leadership and poor leadership skills. All through the Bible, Brass speaks of strength, a conquering power. Micah 4, verse 13. I will make thy hoofs brass. Huh? I'll make what? Thy hoofs brass. And thou shalt beat in places many people. You, You organize people with strength. I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. You see, the presence of God, are you with me, requires kingly strength. It says, thou shalt beat into place with hoofs. Now, a hoof is no small thing. Hoof of a horse. (laughs) You ask yourself, what, put that scripture there again. You ask for yourself, look at the scripture, I will make thy hoofs brass. You ask your hoof is the foot of the horse. You ask yourself, what hope 
does a zebra have against a lion? Or you ask yourself, what hope does a giraffe have against a lion or a pack of lions? It was when I started watching what about even as a rider, as a horse rider myself, I learned to respect the hoof. If if a horse kicks you on your leg, your leg will break into two. Yeah. You you know what you see, you know what is good for you. You never walk behind the horse. The horse is strong from behind. Yes. The horse is strong from behind. Every animal has what it uses. But with the with the buffalo is the head. So they don't allow the lions to be behind them. Because the lions want to jump from the back. But a giraffe, his judgment. I mean, I watched a movie, not a movie, a documentary once, with a, a giraffe surrounded by eight lions. Yeah. And they battled with the lion from night till the morning. Yes. And they were not able to. And the, all that the giraffe does is he turns around. Then was, the giraffe was surrounded. He couldn't go anywhere. But the lions couldn't also eat him. Oh, yes. Eight of them. It just, if it touches you, if it touches you, you're finished. You cannot eat again. You cannot do anything again. You just go whatever. If it touches you. That's why those animals are dangerous. That's why they are dangerous. If a, a zebra does this, um, put on the back. That, I mean, you can't. A lion will not be able to eat again or he will die. If he hit the head or whatever, that's it. Yeah. So when he says hoofs of brass, you will beat, put the scripture on, hoofs of brass, you will beat many people down with hoofs of brass. It shows the judgment. And you see, without a certain kingly strength. You have confusion in the church. Everybody does what he wants. This one says this, this one says this, this one says this, and so on. This is what we are doing. Everybody sit down. Everybody do this. And you see, even the camp becomes more orderly when you exercise strength. Sit here or walk away or leave or stay. Choose it. I tell you, I've been in some churches, especially South America. The confusion that is there because no one is made to sit. Or no one is made to, is controlled to sit down or to behave in a particular way. You know? It's it's amazing. I've never seen anything. But I heard another pastor speaking about it. Of his experience in South America. I mean, there is, it's like, it's like a market. People walking in, out, in, out, moving all over the place. And there's a certain level of the presence of God, which you will not see. One time I was in South America in a particular particular country. It was a church that I've been going to and there was every time people walking, moving, moving. I mean, you will never see the church sitting like how everybody's sitting here. I've not seen it before. Then one day the president I was there and the president of the country came to the church. And when the president came, everybody was seated. So I realized that they are capable of sitting down. If the right thing, they have the right respect. So you realize that people were not enforced, enforced to respect just even the presence of God and the preaching from a pastor. But it's the president of the country that has forced you to acknowledge that you have to sit down. You can't be walking around. For the first time, I said, ah. So president can make you sit down? Without kingly strength, you can't have a nice residence. Like on this campus, we don't allow sachet water here. It's not allowed here. Oh, yes something that is the normal thing in Ghana. And we say, we don't want it here. You can't bring it here. And we don't have it here. You bring it here, something bad will happen to you. Yes. And to those of you who have brought sachet water. Yeah. We don't have it here. 
at our gate, there is a small toll for those who want to park inside. Once you are crossing that gate, and you should see people with big cars with air conditioning, big shots, they don't want to pay. They are the worst of all. Very proud, talking. What is this? Why should we pay this or that? Say, park here, please. And so I had one, one guy, he was a very good security guard. He explained to us, he said, we don't want your car to be spoiled. That is why we have put all here concrete. So it is for your car's sake that we did it. You don't like park here. Oh, yes. You don't like park outside. Because all the land outside Anakazo, we've bought it and paid for all. All those people that is car park is our land. Right. Yes, it's our car park. So you park there and then you, you, you walk nicely, beautifully. Yeah. It's our, ch- it's our property. We own it. We have documents and everything. We paid. And that's why we tied some parts. Oh, yes. Without kingly strength. That's all is needed to bring order in Ghana. And you see, one small thing that wants to be done in the country, hey, it's not a small thing. Meetings, committees, about tolls, about e-levies, about this. Hey, it's, it's wonderful. Yes. You should visit Singapore. Very, Singapore is the Switzerland of, 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 of Asia. Yeah. Like the average person is a rich person. Yes. The average, I mean, you, you, you never go to a place where they are prosperous. I was even surprised that they have prisons. Yes. But they have. They have prisons. Yes. They have prisons with prisoners. A lot of prisoners too. Yeah. And one day I was talking to a pastor. You know, they really admired their leader who died, Lee Kuan Yew. And he said, oh, we grew up with him. Yeah, we grew up with him when he took over. He said, here was dirty. Here was dirty. He said, there's no space. You can't easily have a house in Singapore. You have to stay in an apartment. If, when you are very rich, you still stay in an apartment. And he said, everybody, when they are in their house, when there's something they don't like, let's say there's rubbish, they open the window. They open the window and they throw it out. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> they open the window, they throw it out. So he said to me that we will be there. They said that somebody has thrown a television. You see that television is thrown out. Rubbish, everything, rubbish. So the whole place was dead. Then this man came. Oh, yes. Yes. And he brought strength. And he said, if you do this, chewing gum. You see, when you are entering Singapore, they set your back for chewing gum. Yeah. You are not allowed to seize the chewing gum. You are not allowed to bring more than a thing, some small whatever of chewing gum. The rest, it is seized. It's not allowed in their country. You between, uh, yeah. Even the attitude. They don't want the attitude even in the country. They don't want the attitude in the country. Then they introduced lashes. <laughs> Going, I see, and I remember when I, I once, went, I once went to a public, I think it was a public toilet or whatever, then the sign was there. If you go to the toilet and you don't flush it, <laughs> lashes, I mean, you'll be like different punishments. Oh, Yes. Because people go there, urinate everywhere. They poop everywhere. They mix up the whole place. One person that has visited the toilet, nobody can go there unless there is a major operation that is done because you came there. And you come out walking like a lady with whatever. I said, hey! Dropping, littering, dropping rubbish somewhere. Not Singapore. Not Singapore. 
You even become afraid sometimes if you are there. Oh, yes. Kingly strength is necessary to control people. Yes. You are doing this. You are not doing this. And that kingly strength, you are a pastor and you want to experience the presence of God. You are not likely to experience certain things without that kingly strength also being added to the things you you have. Oh, yes. You want to experience the presence of God and the goodness of God. The strength to fight, do you see, to gain control. Brass was used all over the place where the presence of God was. There are no meaningless details in the Bible. Brass speaks of unyielding power. Deuteronomy 28 verse 22. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption. Hmm? With an inflammation. With an extreme burning. And they shall pursue thee until thou perish. And thy heavens over thy head shall be as brass. Do you get it? What does it mean? And yielding. I will never give rain. I will never give rain. Brass heavens. I will not change my mind. Oh yes. When I started the first love church. Some people came to see me. They said that. I should come back to the Kodesh. And I told them that. As I've come to start, I'll never come back. Yeah, I'll never come back. No matter what. As I've left the Kodesh, I'll never come back. You should, I shouldn't have left. If I've left, I'll never come back. That's something I, t- I said, don't force me to go a certain... When I go on a certain line, I will not return. Brass is needed for the presence of God. That's why we are here now. Oh, yes. I said, don't even start. That I've left and I've started the church in December. 2011, as I've made that step, then I shouldn't have made it. But as I've made it, I will never change my mind again. Oh, yes. There are people who have relationships with I've told them. If I change my mind, I will never change it again. I'm just telling you. If you push me to a place, when I change my mind and I take it, I will never, I will never change the decision. It will be like brass. It will never give, change or yield anything. All your pressure and all your prayers and all your pleadings will not change it. Yes. It's necessary also. Oh, yes. You see, people don't realize that strength is needed where God's people are concerned and where the presence of God must be. Yes. Strength. Kingly strength. Yes. Some people feel they are the only ones who have hatred. Your hatred makes you dangerous, but my hatred also makes me dangerous. Yes. I equally passionately dislike certain things. And the Bible says, This thou hast, I recommend you for this, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He said, this, uh, this, I recommend you for your hatred. This thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans. It was the only thing that I recommended them for, for their hatred. I give it to you, for hatred you have, it is good. John the Baptist was an unyielding man in the things of God. That's why the presence of God was with him. Jesus said, what did you go to see? A reed that was shaking in the wind. And when the wind blows, it goes like, Shh. when the people come and people are against it, it goes like, Shh. when they ask you which party do you belong, you see, when you realize that they are all NDC, you say, oh, I'm NDC. 
When you realize that they are all MPP, then you you will go MPP. He said, what did you go to see? A rich shaking with the wind? (laughs) A man who goes this way and this way. Huh? A man who says, today I'm in the ministry, tomorrow I'm a businessman. Today I'm serving God, the next day I'm serving mammon. Today I'm in the church, tomorrow I'm not in the church. Today I'm all out, next time I'm halfway, I'm not so sure anymore. What did you go to see? A reed shaking in the wind? Huh? What's the next verse? Did you go to look for a man clothed in soft raiment, a softy, a cc? No, 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 no. Continue, this man who is up there. What went you out to see? He said, you saw a prophet. You saw anointing in my presence. He said, there is no greater person than this man. Of all the prophets. Yeah. Because the brass and yield, he said, the heavy will never give in to certain things. Never. Never. There must be a place of no return. What I've decided to do. Don't push me. Don't push me. If you push me and I cross a line, I'll never come back. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. What did you go to see? Something that is today involved in this. Tomorrow, you are doing something else. As we have put our hand to the plow to evangelize, there's no. When I decided to do evangelism, eh, to be an evangelist, I thought about it deeply. Yeah, I thought about it because I knew the implications. To go here, to go here, to go. I can't say I will not go here, go here, go here. When I took the decision, I said, whether people come, people don't come. Whether it's a big place or no place, whether it's a poor place or whatever, I will do it. And I've not changed my mind. God needs people who would not change their mind about the good things that he has given to them. Yes, they're not going to be today. Ha! Ah, Daddy, I'm so blessed by your message. You know, I really enjoy the church. It's a very powerful church. I'm so blessed as a first lover. Then tomorrow, so I'm going to my presby. I'm going to my presby. I'm a Methodist. I'm a Methodist. You're not a Methodist. Oh, really? You're not a Methodist. We didn't know you were a Methodist all this time. Wishy washy CC. That's why. The presence of God will not and cannot be with you. Cannot and will not. You are going to your mother church. Number three. Job chapter 40 verse 18. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. In the ministry, in the church work, there are many strong enemies training to come against you. Weaklings will not survive in the battle of ministry. Yes. Many, 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 many enemies will come. You must equally make your bones ready for all types of attacks. First Samuel chapter 17. There went out a champion of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of God whose height was six cubits and a span and he had and helmet of brass. Huh? 
and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. <laughs> and he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. My goodness. <laughs> Brass is the symbol of fighting strength. That's why Goliath was heavily loaded with brass. You must be ready to fight and fight on. Do you think I don't know that Sierra Leone is a poor country? I've been all over Sierra Leone. You think I don't know that Liberia is a poor country and that there's no job there? You think I don't know? You think I don't know that Cote d'Ivoire is a poor country? I've been from the top all over. Huh? As I'm sending somebody there, you think I don't know? Do you think I don't know Ghana? I mean, I don't know the nations of this world, the places we are sending people. But God has sent us to fight and the presence of God to fight brass, to make us very wild and strong and unyielding with power and strength, hoofs of brass, heavens of brass, armor of brass, fighting strength, wishy-washy and yielding, wishy-washy people, sissies, are not helpful, you not have much of the presence of God. Yes. Don't forget this. His bones were brass. His bones was iron. One pastor said to me, Hey, me, I have never sent anybody anywhere. <laughs> you are sending people here, there, here, there, here, there. Yeah. They are so happy. They are so happy to be sent. They are so happy. And the nations are happy to receive them. Did you see our pastor from Guinea? He became a bishop. He was a young, he's still very young. Small boy. When he went to Guinea, if you have that video, it would be good to watch it. It's just two minutes. When we went to Guinea, when he went to Guinea, I think the ambassador, the Ghanaian ambassador, she was a lady. And I think she just felt some compassion for him and decided to join his church. Oh, yes. (laughs) Oh, yes. She was a nice lady. She, She supported us. She's not our church member. But she helped and she, she joined the church. And she was helping him. Oh, yes. I was so happy when he built a beautiful church. And uh, he's become a bishop now. Not even a, you, you, not a, a, not a first love bishop. UD. Well, you know UD, their requirements are higher. Beautiful. You think I don't know that Guinea is, um, has other religions? 99.9%. Yeah, 99.9%. There's no Christianity there. Yeah. But you see, you have to fight with strength. Every standing. I'm, my eyes are in this direction. Those people in the, in the middle there who just stood up, as you are sitting there, you see that you are in a room. You know, I tell people when I'm having a meeting, never sit at a place you can't see my face. And if you where you are sitting, you can't see my face, move. Otherwise, you are rude. To me, you are rude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Power. 
Judges chapter 16. And she said, that is Delilah. Samson, the Philistines are, are upon thee. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times and shake myself. But he wist not that the Lord was departed. So the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. This always speaks of strength. Something that is really strong. So remember, if you want to see the hand of the Lord in your life and your ministry, strength is not a bad thing. And I want to say to the brothers, I found more girls with more strength than brothers. It's true. Do you know, do you know what, where that mystery is coming from? That mystery is coming from, you see, when usually a guy has a strong personality, he's like a leader, he's a strong, usually it goes along with independence and I want to be my own man and lead myself and do whatever, create whatever for myself. So such personality types often don't stay stable around. Yes. But the ladies who have such personalities, do you see, because they are ladies, they're more, they more also happy to work under somebody. And like somebody said, in employment law, men change their job more than four times in their lifetime. But ladies, my sister is an employment lawyer. She told me. She said, but ladies, they will stay with you. If you treat them nicely, they will stay with you all their life. They don't change where they are working. You know, so you see that brothers who have the type shh, that can lead and build, many of them don't stay faithful. Yes, that's why most of our pastors are phlegmatics. I'm just telling you what there is, I'm not saying what should be, I'm just saying what there is. Most pastors are phlegmatic. That temperament type also allows them to just be faithful and be around. But the drive to build and the strength to fight through, not so many have it. But if the church has been forced to exist and you put them there, the church works. Yes, because pastoring needs faithfulness. That is the main thing that is needed to be a a pastor and to do the work. To be there faithfully forever. Yeah. <laughs> Faithfully with the people forever. Don't change. You are there always. They can depend on you. Be there. So this strength is something that even if it's not your temperament or your whatever, you must develop it. That's why you have ladies, some ladies in charge of so many things. But they have the strength that is needed for certain areas of ministry. Yes. And we need more kingly strength to organize basentes and buses. Everybody who comes ever comes for Soul in Sunday, he has registered his possible interest and possible membership. And where are they the following Sunday? And where are they the Sundays after? They are all possible members. But you need kingly strength. Binding power to bind them with strength into the church membership. Oh, yes. How many are going to be involved in kingly strength? So we see the presence of God in an awesome way. Bishop Oyedepo, you see, he organized with strength buses for the whole of Lagos. People even made and built churches. They built a whole church fully equipped and everything. He says, I don't have any vision to have a branch there. On Sunday, everybody comes here. I don't have any vision for that. Everybody come here. With kingly strength, he organized the whole of Lagos with buses from as far as Aleki Island and everywhere. All of them come to church. 400,000 of them. Come and listen to the prophet speaking to you. That's all. 
And it takes kingly strength to see such an organization and a mobilization. If you don't have strength, you, you, you can never do something like that. It will just fizzle out in two seconds. Yeah. It takes strength to mobilize. And there you see, then, and you can see, when you see even the crowd and the thousands of people, even immediately, even though you are not spiritual, you feel the presence of God. Even you, crowd, you feel the presence of God. You suddenly realize that you are feeling spiritual. It's like the way people have come, spirituality will come. That's what I'm saying, that you need the brass. And then you will see the presence. Because there are certain accommodations when you go and rent them, the man will not stay there. He cannot stay there. One time, I went to a town called Mamu. Find it on the, on the map. Mamu. Oh, yes. Find it and put it on the map. Find it and put it on the map. Mamu. Spelled M-A-M-O-U. Mamu. Oh, yes. Find it and put it there. I hope there's somebody working hard over there. Your job is at stake. Will you remove that thing from there before something happens to you? Now, I'm waiting for them to find it. When I got to Mamu, it was around 10, 11. Or is it midnight? Yeah, something. When I got there, you look at the places. I said, there is no residence here that I can stay in. So I stayed in my car. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I stayed in my car, did everything in my car. Yes. I remember that place very well. Mamu. Yeah. I look at the environs. Environs. You know what environs are? That one, you know, you don't need a bluff of that one. I look at the environs. Environment, the surroundings. Look at it. We need Mamu, not environs. We know environs. We need Mamu. We don't need environs. We need Mamu. You can't bamboozle us with this if you have not done your work. in my car through till the morning it's like the Holy Spirit coming wanting to come then when he looks he realizes that there's nothing that the environment there's no residence with the things that are necessary that I can come into so he just stays outside yes he stays away and truly that night I slept outside 
I did everything outside. Beautiful. Yes. Is that how the Holy Spirit feels when he comes and he looks at your life? There's no strength. No brass. No gold. No eternal things. No white linen. No purple. No royalty. No scarlet. No courage. No blue. No stability. Permanence in you. And then he says, I'll be outside. I'll be outside. (laughs) I'll be outside. I'll be outside. And he stays outside. Yes. So from today, steps to the presence. Are you with me? Steps to his presence. Very important that you develop those steps. Somebody is in serious trouble. You have not shown us the video of our pastor in Guinea. You have not shown us Mamu. And what do you want from us again? (laughs) 